Hey BookTube, how's it going? Um, I finished quite a few books um, this week and I'm on pace to maybe get two more in before the week's over. So um, I might have a bunch of um, book reviews here. So the first one that I want to do <clears throat> is because it's been my favorite book that I've read this year, um, by far, by far. And um, it came out in 1990. It is um, Dick Tracy by J. Mader, um, the unofficial or the official biography, Life and Times, America's number one crime stopper. Wait, I don't know if that's how it's supposed to go. Anyway, um, okay, let me tell you who would like this book. Because some of you might be going, Dick who? Who's Dick Tracy? Um, especially if um, you weren't alive when the Warren Beatty, Madonna, Al Pacino vehicle came out. Which... Um, I think Warren Beatty's Dick Tracy was kind of me, and Madonna's Breathless Mahoney was kind of me, but dude, Al Pacino's Big Boy, bam, man, um, he was unreal. <clears throat> the funny thing is, he um was very like almost non-existent to what big boy was like um in the actual uh comic strip but um man al pacino dude kills it so um and dustin hoffman is mumbles um that was also quite good so um anyway this book is great it goes through um chester gould um kind of shopping Dick Tracy uh, to this one guy who was like um, King Tut's bowel movement, if you catch my drift, of the <clears throat> newspaper world. Um, and it just kind of goes into a bit of it. Very sandy already. Um, shows some of the violence that you would see how Dick Tracy gets hired to be a plainclothes detective, um, which is basically saying, hey, my girlfriend's dad got shot. And then the chief of police going, well, there's no one better to be on the plainclothes squad than you, buddy. Um, Captain Joseph Metal Patterson is the guy um, who Chester Gould, this guy, um, was sending stuff to constantly. Um, and here's some test strips. And when he sent it in, uh, he sent it in as plain clothes Tracy. Um, and the boss said, it's too long, it's too long. Let's come up with some other names. And they almost stuck on George before going with Dick. Um so you just have chapter after chapter of just awesome um, history about the character. So we're like learning the character's life, but as we're doing that, we're learning all about Chester Gould and what was going on at the paper, what was going on in America at the time. And um, this takes you... What? Yeah. It takes you right through the 30s, the 30s, 40s, um... It takes you all the way up into the late 70s, and then even after Chester Gould leaves, and you have, like, Max Allen Collins um, and others working on it. Um, but, oh, man, it's just, like, page after page of awesomeness. And it's just so brutal for a comic strip. And when I was a kid, I would read it. Um, at my grandparents' house. 
Not my grandma. Grandma was the Calvin and Hobbes person. Uh, my grandparents just got the paper every day, Orange County Register. And um, there was like Dick Tracy, Amazing Spider-Man. Um, you had your typical Dennis the Menace, Family Circus, uh, and then Garfield and stuff like that. But um, Dick Tracy and Amazing Spider-Man were fun because it was like if I missed a day, I was screwed. And so every day, and that's probably where my serial fascination came from. That and trying to pay attention to my grandma's soap operas. But, um, yeah, man, um, it's just awesome. And, um, it even has a couple bits where you have, uh, color pages. And look at this. So this color page, look at all the snow he had to do on that. Look at that. That's crazy. I actually could do without the color bits because I think the um, black and white stuff is just so good. Um, I would rather not have them. Um, I read it and then flipped through it a second time. And just kind of went through it all again. But then um, I went through a third time just going into things that I really dug. That I wanted to read more of. Oh, and then like little things like um, some of Dick Tracy's uh, stuff. Like the two-way wrist radio. Um, that ended up... Someone like created one and sent it to him and... Um, man, it's just like, I, I just, I can't say enough good stuff about this. If you like serial fiction, if you like comic strips, if you like, um, you could have your hard boiled detective, but Dick Tracy wasn't hard boiled like that. He was hard boiled. I'm not even going to use that word. He was like crime doesn't pay so i'm going to give it to you kind of thing and dick tracy fell under a lot of fire come the 70s because by that time people were like well i don't think it's fair that dick tracy doesn't like read people their rights and he just like if they do something bad, he just shoots them or lets them die or blah, 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 blah. And um, to me, you're, you're, if you're one of those people who think that, you're missing the point of Dick Tracy. I mean, the villains in it are horrible and horribly disfigured a lot of the times. Um and sometimes not, but a lot of times, like the grotesques, were these people who um, Dick Tracy or Chester Gould was like, okay, this is basically caricatures, okay? So this person, whatever his thing is, we need to be able to see it like manifest physically. And Dick Tracy is like the antithesis of that. And so he's like the law and um, he's like, it's almost like he's judge jury executioner. It's like, you won't get away with this and this is why kind of thing. And does that send the message that police officers should use excessive force when picking people up? I don't know. It's a comic strip. Um, I don't know what the social commentary there is um, for someone just coming into it. Like, you could look into Chester Gould's life and say, okay, he was very hard-nosed when it came to, um, like, his views on rights of police officers and stuff like that. 
But to someone who doesn't know these things and they're just reading a comic strip, that's what it is. It's a comic strip. And so I feel like when he left, I want to say it was like 77, 78. I might be wrong on that. I think they kept him on as a consultant, if I remember correctly, through the mid 80s. Um, but my dates might not be 100%. But just as him being the one to create Dick Tracy and then do it every day for decades to see the tide turn and um, see that like people are starting to side with the villains because Dick Tracy isn't doing what he should do. Um, and that's really weird um, to think about. And then it's weirder because then I was thinking about today because on Google today it said there was a poll done and 70% of millennials um, would vote socialist if that was an option or something like that. I'm fudging the facts here, guys, but here's the point. And then I was thinking, I'm like, wow, like if, because Dick Tracy's still being printed today um, in syndication and newspapers, but I haven't read it in years, so I don't know what kind of slant they're taking on anything. Um, but I was just thinking, like, man, if Chester Gould's Dick Tracy was around today, like, what would happen? Like, would, like, the public just completely eviscerate him? Or would it be a thing where he feels like he doesn't even know the America he's writing to kind of thing? Like, when I think about things like that, my mind starts boggling. But getting away from that... This book is so good. Like, um, this was such a pleasurable read. Um, again, like, I'm kind of on my third way through it now. Um, it's just so much fun. Like, I love the artwork. I love the stories. Um, I love the behind-the-scenes stuff. It's just, this book has everything. So, if you like Dick Tracy or want to know more about it, or you like police procedurals, or you like comic strips or whatever. I think you'll like this book. It's a it's a definite pickup. Bye-bye.